Hi guys, we're in a new section now, New Tools in the Arsenal, which is Section 5, and we previously looked into Brute Forcing, which was Section 4. In this section, we'll be introduced to the vulnerability scanner, Weef. We'll see what open proxies and open redirects are, and we'll also understand what remote command execution and information disclosure is, and we'll talk about tampering data in packets. In this video, we'll be looking at an introduction to vulnerability scanners. We'll learn what they do, and why we should use them, we'll also stage an attack with a vulnerability scanner called Weef and learn the advantages and disadvantages of vulnerability scanners. Weef is an open source and free vulnerability scanner created by Andres Riancho, I hope I got that correct, and it was created in late 2006. So there are various other options that we can use for vulnerability scanners. There's Burp Suite, which has a free version but is limited, and they also have a commercial one. Akinetics, which has a commercial one and doesn't have a free version but does have a trial. Asp Zap, which is free. And we also have Weef, which is also free. So I think that before I go on to Weef, I should talk about the advantages and disadvantages of scanning. People talk about that and I do want to put some points across so that you are made sure about web vulnerability scanning. So first of all there are advantages, it automates in finding vulnerabilities, it, it makes it much easier for us to be aware of certain vulnerabilities that may be on a page and does it in a faster way than we possibly could do humanly. It also crawls pages that wouldn't necessarily be found. It does it in a sort of systematic way that also humans wouldn't do and it can also fasten the process in application security so if you've got a deadline and vulnerabilities are found it fastens the process that you don't need to keep scanning the page and checking manually it can do that without much help from you now there are also disadvantages of scanning um so they are automated scripts they won't be for your bespoke application and that, you know, scanning may not pick up things completely correct all the time with every single vulnerability. That's because, obviously, it's not built specifically for your application. So that is something to take in mind that even though automated vulnerability scanners are very impressive and they do find a hell of a lot, you will find that also it will be a good idea to do manual checking of vulnerabilities because the amount of times that a scanner may not find even an XSS while a human can is quite high. Web vulnerability scanners also find false positives quite a lot. find it in plain text where they find a little pattern and they think maybe that's something that's to do with a vulnerability or it's not correct in showing you that. This can cost time because you have to check and make sure that that isn't happening if there is quite a lot of these false positives and that's something to take in mind with web vulnerability scanning. As well as that, the last point I want to bring up is that no skill is required and what I mean by that is, you know, it's it's quite easy to enter a target's name and click scan and then paste all of the vulnerabilities that the scanner's found. You should look at the actual vulnerabilities that are within the scanner. Sometimes it does bring up false positives, even though it looks like it can't possibly not be that vulnerability. You should always check, because sometimes computer programs aren't always right. So first of all, you can find Weef in Kali Linux, Web Applications, Web Vulnerability Scanners, and it is here, next to Vega. You'll be confronted with a GUI that looks like this. I have already entered the target in here, which is HTTP 192.168.1.2, and also the folder path. What we've also got on the front page is profiles. Profiles allow us to custom build what sort of scan we want to do of this web application, and I have chosen the full audit profile. We can also edit this profile by going into here and ticking boxes, and we can also learn about the different features that it has by just clicking on the text and it will highlight it and we can read what it is in the right of the window. For now, we just want the defaults on. We can say start scan here and it will begin to scan. And if we go down here, we can see that there's various information that will tell us about how the scanning is going on. And it, the information it's giving is basically what the crawling is doing at this current time, what the audit is currently doing at this time, and then we have a log showing what it's found while it's scanning. 
The HTT speed is how many requests it's doing per minute, and this is a simple graph telling us the debug information it's giving, as well as the information, as well as the vulnerabilities that it's found. As you well as notice, there is an info sort of color-coded text, basically, so red is vulnerability, and... Blue is information. Now what I would do at this time if you are scanning a web application is to leave it with itself because it may take some time to fully audit. Depending on how many pages you have can depend on how long it takes. So if we go to the exploit tab which is available here we can see that there'll be a load of exploits potentially in this long drop down. Uh, most important ones ones with crosses like this and if you highlight on them the exploits which you can drag and hit will exploit but I do um, say that it actually is better if you do it outside of Weave and learn about the vulnerability within Weave. So if we go to result we can see there's a lot of knowledge base within our scan that I've, I've just done quickly and we can see there's an SQLI already if we go into that and just highlight into the tree. We can see that it'll allow us to see some information about it. So we've got SQL injection and then MySQL data was, database was found. So it looked and it found that the order ID basically is SQL injectable. And then it gives us some raw what it done in the request. And the headers that it gave within it. And then the response that it got. As we can see here um, it wasn't ready for that. So it also has an encode and decode feature that we can have here which is fairly good because it also has a manual HTTP request option for you as well, which you can send. And we can also look at the layout of the site almost by using the results URLs tab here. And we can see that this is the host and it goes to various, these are folders. So we've got work here, course, and then it goes to pages, then another folder. And this is quite a good thing to look if you, got the crawler on and you're not fully sure of various pages and they don't have robots.txt or um, sitemaps this is a fairly good surprising feature of we I thought they didn't have one thing that I would like to know about what I said in the disadvantages is that we thinks it's found US social security number within my CSS this is the sort of stuff that's a problem with vulnerability scanners at the moment and I do think that people that are looking at vulnerability scanners and finding them attractive should use them, but also don't use them and not do manual penetration tests as well. That is a thing that should be taken to note. So in this video, we've understood the basics of Weave. It has the exploits. You can look at the various maps of it. You've got the logs, and you've also got what you can see, the specifics of what it's found in the results. We've learned about advantages and disadvantages that may come from automated scanning. And we've also staged the scan to find various vulnerabilities. It found the SQLI. In the next video, we'll be looking at open redirects and open proxies.